Let's see here. What we have here is a group of Scryer Acolytes, and these have been sitting on my project's desk for a little while, so I think it's about time we got these things painted up. And because there's so many of them, I'm just going to be painting them to tabletop standard. And one quick round of base coating later, we're ready to start with the brush. Uh, base these guys in brown, I figured that would be a good starting position, especially since I'm going with red for the robes. Red is kind of the main predominant color of all the fabric for my Skaven army, and so I just wanted to use that here. These guys are Scryer Acolytes, and since I run Clan Scryer, that means that they're going to be battle line. I got 20 of these rats to paint, and I don't have time to make them all perfect. Now, I could spend the time to make them all perfect, of course, but there's 20 of them. It would take a really long time, and for something that you're going to be looking at from a distance of about 2 to 3 feet on the tabletop most of the time, it's not really necessary. You want to paint them, of course, and a painted model will always look better than grey plastic, but you don't need to do a lot of fancy highlighting and shading and everything for something that's going to get shot off the table round one most of the time. These are battle line units. You need to have a few of them, and you need to have unit sizes of at least five in the case of Scryer Acolytes, so you're never going to be looking at these guys in the way that you would an individual character model, say. It's not really badge painting if you don't miss something. And with this last color here, a little bit of bone white on some of the fabric and wrappings and things, that's it for uh, base coats, really. Everything after this is detail work. So technically these guys are battle ready apart from their base. You know, they got the they got the colors on there. You got red and silver and uh, brown and flesh tone and all that. You know, these are perfectly playable miniatures at this stage, but you know, there's still a lot more that could be done with them. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about that and we're gonna talk a little bit about the conversions. Uh, the backpacks on all of these guys are from various Admech miniatures. I think I've got three that were from some sort of servitor type thing, bigger ones. Um, and those have uh, Admech little logo things on the on the back. So I've glued a shield or a little gubbin or something onto all of those just to cover up that. And I've had to do the same for, for some of these uh, smaller ones here, like these ones. These also have a little Admet cog on them, so I had to cover those up. Uh, this guy here, he's special. He gets a special scanner arm because I needed the backpack, and so I had to have the arm to go with it because of the way that this is sculpted. Uh, the gas masks on all of these are just the Plague Monk's heads with bits of plastic rod and, and green stuff and plastic card and, and things. Uh, there's a few different styles on here, but basically I've covered the Plague Monk heads in green stuff and shoved some plastic rod into them for the most part. A couple uh, around like this guy here that just have little lenses in there that I'm going to paint blue. And then there's a couple more like, uh, oh this guy, this guy's got one actually, where the Plague Monk head had this sort of rounded metal grate. Thing, and I've just tried to duplicate it on the other side with some green stuff. So, and then the hands. These are kind of the most involved part of this conversion is sculpting all of these little hands. The hands are green stuff. I've sculpted those and just glued a bead into place. So they're all holding these little beads to make the uh, the poison wind globes. But it's not a it's not a super uh, complicated conversion or anything. Just um, just a bit of a pain to sculpt all those hands. So now we're on to the wash stage, and what I've decided to do here is leave basically all of the footage in, but sped up, so you can see about how long the whole process takes. The wash stage took about half an hour total, I believe it was, uh, compared to the base coat stage, which was about three hours to get all of the reds and metallics and things down on these guys. The wash stage is where a lot of the detail is going to come out. Now, if I had a dip wash, I could have tried to do that, but I don't. I only have the wash with the brush, so thinned it down a little bit, grabbed a thick brush, and slapped it on everything as quickly as I could. What this means for me is that I had a lot of tedious washing to do. What it means for you is that this is a great moment for me to talk about Clan Scryer. Clan Scryer is one of the five great Skaven clans, and is the sort of mad scientist rats of the bunch. 
There are vast numbers of Scryer clans scattered across the mortal realms, varying from small bands of warlock engineers and their scurrying servants to massive million-strong hordes that inhabit sprawling fortified burrows. They gnaw out their workshop spaces inside craggy mountains or rumbling volcanoes, beneath ruined cities or through the innards of colossal ancient mechanisms that grind and churn beneath the surface of the realms. These factory burrows are hellish places, crammed with spinning gears, roaring furnaces, clanking pistons, and copper coil tubes that dance with caged green lightning. Unstable alchemical apparatus bubble among teetering crates of machine parts and heaps of explosive munitions. The weird machines of the laboratory burrows require vast amounts of power, generated by mechanisms such as slave gangs running inside huge wooden wheels, because of course there are, leech pipes sucking the vitality from slowly dying volcanoes, titanic brass batteries powered by the bubbling remains of the cursed dead, and countless other foul innovations. Barely controlled chaos reigns as construction lines churn out lethal devices at a terrifying pace. Vast and strange are the engines of war created by these nightmarish factories, and though the clan scryers sell many of their contraptions to the highest bidder, they always keep the best weapons for themselves. For me, Clan Scryer is the most interesting of the great clans, and it's why I decided to paint them instead of one of the others. Now, Ishin can be kind of fun as well, because, you know, rat, rat assassin ninjas are always a good time. But who looks at rats and goes, but what if mad science? What if we gave them warp lightning cannons and rattling guns and all manner of horrible steam-powered brass contraptions? And it's easy to look at rats and go, yeah, okay, well, we'll make a horde of them. We'll do clan verminous. We'll do just a whole bunch of clan rats. We'll do clan molder. We'll make weird sort of mutated abomination rats. Lots of big ones. Lots of little ones. Oh, plague. Rats were big carriers of disease. We'll do clan pestilence. We'll do a plague-themed rats army with all kind of weird diseases and things that they've come up with to inflict on people. Clan Scryer is a little bit out there. Clan Scryer embodies the Skaven sort of ingenuity and inventiveness for which the Skaven are really famous. You know, it's easy to just flood someone's army with rats and bury them under a tide of chittering bodies, which the Skaven will very much do. Eh, but it's quite another thing to lob a bunch of glass balls full of poisonous gas at them and watch them all melt, which is what these guys are for. So here you can see we've arrived at the end of the wash stage and everything that's going to have ink wash put on it has been. I used flesh colored ink wash uh, just for everything on here. I put it on the metallics as well, just figured I'd cover everything. And after that it was just time to do a little bit of highlighting and some detail work and tidying up. Places where the ink had splashed over on the sides I cleaned up. I gave the robes a little bit of highlights. And with the, the robes, the point of these highlights isn't to just edge highlight everything. You could do that, but it would take a little while. Uh, it was better really to just hit them with the brush a couple of times, get a few points of contrast in there. The eye lenses are one detail that I needed to paint after the fact, of course. Flesh wash doesn't do so well over blue. And I did decide, rather than just leaving them one solid color of blue, I'd put a quick little highlight on there. It added a lot of extra visual depth and interest to those lenses, while still being a lot simpler than the process that I might use on something I was going to put a little bit more work into. Alright, then after that it was on to the warp stone. Warp stone's a whole process, and it's probably the most involved thing on these minis, but it's also going to be a focal point of interest for them, so... I used a lot of different greens for these and ultimately painted them more or less in the same manner as I did the warp stone on my warp lightning cannon video from a while back, except I skipped the yellow. There's a little bit less layers of paint on these, and also, of course, because I'm painting these sort of globe things that they're carrying that are supposed to have gas in them, I didn't really have a natural point of highlights. I just had to kind of dab green paint on there until it looked like a bit of green gas swirling around inside a glass ball. And then we brought back the micron pens. Anyone remember these? Oh yes. Much easier to draw little things onto these books and scrolls that the Skaven are going to be holding than it is to paint that on there. And I wanted to kind of have some fun with these little bits. It doesn't take all that long because I'm using the micron pens and there's four of these things that came in the Plague Monk box. Just a couple little details like that can really help spruce up your units. The last couple of things that I needed to paint on these were all the fingernails and toenails from the rats, so I took care of those pretty quick with a detail brush and some deck tan. And uh, then there was a few other little details that hadn't really been done, so I just 
hit him with some bright bronze. Didn't bother to wash or highlight this. It was just a couple of points of like little charms and earrings and things. Slap some uh, Papa Destro's old fashioned texture paste onto the base. I got a video for that. I'll put it up on the screen here. A quick wash and some static grass finished it off. And that's it. They're all done. All 20 of these guys. I think it took me about 8 hours total to paint the lot of them, which sounds like a lot until you remember that there's 20 of these things, and that works out to just around 24 minutes per model, less than half an hour each. Now are these the greatest things I've ever painted? No. But they are painted, and they'll look good on the tabletop when they're sitting around in groups of five, and that's kind of the important thing. You don't need to agonize over painting every last little miniature perfectly, and I used to do that and it made my armies take a long time to paint. So spend a couple hobby sessions, knock out some minis to tabletop standard. Your army will thank you for it and it'll look a lot better. That's it for this video though, so I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope to see you again next time on Realm of the Lich King. I've been Destro, you've been great. Have a great day.